It's a way she cash. Hey. Long hair with that slim waist. So, thanks for coming in. No, thank you. Uh, how about we start with talking about your history with music, your background. So how long have you been rapping for? Um, I started quite a while back. I started writing back when I was uh, 14. Um, started rapping over instrumentals when I was 16. Uh, probably got good after I turned 18. Um, since then I've been taking it a little bit more seriously. Ever since I finished high school basically, yeah. So what did you start rapping with when you were 14? What brought you to that? Um, oh, my older brothers used to rap, um, they were always, and Tupac mainly, that's about it, my brothers and Tupac, yeah. And so what did you listen to growing up before that? Um, Tupac mainly, um, Jedi Mind Tricks was a massive influence, um, that's about it. Um, Immortal Technique I used to be into, Lupe Fiasco, that kind of stuff, yeah. And so what changed at 18 when you started getting serious about it? Um, I think it was probably when my voice broke um, and I started sounding a little bit more serious and not like a little kid. Um, and then I had more free time once I was in uni. I uh, wasn't studying too hard because that's not what you do at uni. So, yeah. so what have you been doing since then? How have you been getting into it? Um, I released a demo a couple of years back. Uh, since then I've been working on my mixtape and my EP. Um, so mixtape should be out next year, early next year. Uh, EP is going to take a little bit longer. There's just one song that I need to finish writing and then I'll get onto that, yeah. Great, so how did you get to Producers Lounge? Um, I actually heard of that through my friend Baha. Uh, he got me in contact with Mo, who's the producer at Producers Lounge, uh, main producer. Um, and then we got in contact with Keisha and Francois, um, figured out, and then Matt and Vin sent through a couple of the instrumentals, and we picked the one that would fit best for myself. Um, and then, yeah, I wrote my lyrics, sent it to Keisha, she wrote her chorus, and then we came in and recorded it with Mo. Yeah. So you tell me about the recording session that you had. <laughs> oh, um, that was really good, something I'll probably remember for a really long time. Um, it was the first time, it wasn't the first time I was in an actual studio, but it was the first time I had um, somebody as professional as Mo uh, behind the, um, on the production side of it. Um, and he really gave me a really good uh, insight into what really goes into recording a full proper song and to get it um, sounding as radio friendly and as smooth basically as possible. Yeah. And he had you rapping, improving for a long time, right? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, uh, near the end of the th track, because um, I'm, I'm real picky and iffy about any small changes in anything um, when I'm recording especially, because I've been practicing it in a certain way for so long. Um, and he changed the beat on me while I was in the uh, booth mm -hmm. and um, I was freaking out for a bit, but then I ended up working with it and ended up sounding even better than it did before and it got me even more in the zone and so that part of the song it's the, um, sounds even better now, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had you rapping for two hours? Yeah, legit, two hours straight, non-stop. I was sweating by the end of it, but it was, it was worth it at the end. When, he, when I got the final product back, uh, I could really see why he got me to keep doing takes, keep doing takes. Um, but it was a really good learning curve for myself. So what happened? You came in and he was like, always get in the booth two <laughs> yeah. hours straight. Yeah, basically. Oh, I didn't, he never told me that it was going to end up taking two hours. So maybe I would have been a little bit more mentally prepared if he had. <laughs> but um, no, I, I just came in thought, thinking that I had it already as, as good as I was going to get it and how much I'd practiced it. <clears throat> um, but then obviously the more you rap, the, your tone goes up and down and so he needed to, he needed to get takes that were usable. Um, so that's why it took that long. I found this um, track on your Facebook page that has 11,000 views that, oh, yeah. that you did following the siege at Martin Place in Sydney yeah. and the Taliban massacre of students and teachers in Peshawar yeah. in Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, can you just tell us about this track, where it came from and how it came together? Yeah. Um, at the time that uh, the Martin Place uh, siege and the shootings in Peshawar happened, I was actually in Pakistan at the time. Um, and it was weird because it happened, two separate things happened. They all have this line where it says, um, I can't believe this happened in my backyard. So it's like legit in the two backyards that I would have is one is in Australia and one's in Pakistan. They both happened around the same time in both my backyards. And it was, uh, it was that's how I came about it. It was, the, I heard uh, over 150 kids uh, were killed that day in Peshawar and 
I didn't know the kids, I'd never met them, but just hearing about it on the news, I, I actually just broke down that day. And um, that night, I stayed up and I wrote the whole song in one sitting um, and then recorded it within a couple of days just on my webcam. Never thought that it would get that, those kind of views, but um, yeah, it did. Uh, so it was really, it was really grateful that uh, people were listening. I just want yeah. to know, like, what, like, why you wrote it and where it came from. Oh, okay, from. yeah. Super um, interesting track. Yeah, um, uh, the biggest reason why I wrote it was at the time there I could foresee a lot of blowbacks in Australia and in the Western uh, countries against uh, Muslims living in those countries. And so I wrote that track um, to sort of show everybody on Facebook basically that I know I, there's a lot of people that would understand that not all Muslims are terrorists, but there's also the other side who do believe that and then who want to stop refugees coming into Australia and all that um, stuff. And so my track was basically just giving my 2% as an Australian Muslim.